Tonight at 11, a groundhog sees his shadow, which means we will be experiencing six more weeks of winter. Then, at 11.05, the groundhog texts his friends and cracks up about how people still think he has any control over the weather. But first, this. <laughs> Hey, Thadia, what are you up to? Oh, nothing, my dear Leopold. I'm just putting my finishing touches on this Oscar ballad. I think I'm a shoe in for my gated community's uh, contest there. Oh, what's the prize? The winner gets to take home an Oscar. Oh, like a uh, cheap plastic trophy or something? No, we strip our friend Oscar down to his skivvies and uh, we slather him in gold body paint. Usually takes three gallons, everybody pitches in. Ah, rewarding the winner with a literal example of male obje objectification, eh? Indeed. So tell me, who do you have to win uh, Best Picture? I'm personally thinking Boyhood. Ew, are you serious? Boyhood? <laughs> More like, oh boy, that was no good, am I right? It took Linklater 12 years to capture the mediocre childhood that no real boy would ever want to revisit. revisit. Besides, Pixar's Up covered like 60 more years in about 150 less minutes, so I don't get what all the commotion is about. And don't even get me started on him casting his own daughter. Can you say nepotism? I want to kick that guy in his boyhood for being such a disgrace. Well, excuse me, Richard Link hater. Didn't mean to offend you. So who do you have for best picture, Selma? 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 More like Selma tickets back. It was so... Unrealistic. Like, Oprah could have easily gotten out of all those altercations. Like, by just giving each cop um, a cranberry candle or something. I mean, sure, it was well shot and everything, but it was just unnecessarily sad and gr gratuitously violent. Could you imagine if any of that actually happened? Jesus! Thad, can you just shut up and tell me who you picked for best picture before you sound any more insensitive or ignorant? First of all, I am the antithesis of ignorant. Okay? Thank you very much. And second of all, the Lego movie. What? You know, the one with the little yellow guys that snap together, and they have that song about how everything is awesome. You do know that it's not even nominated, right? Are you serious? Yeah. So, does that mean that everything isn't awesome? You're ridiculous. I'm out of here. All right. All right, what's your name? Javier. Marianne. I'm Matt. Ray. Uh, David Adlegel. All right, and are you aware of the past terrible weather experience that we just had? Uh, I'm very aware of the so-called storm, yes. The snowpocalypse? Mm, exactly, yeah. And how did you prepare for the uh, recent snowpocalypse? So, first of all, I, I prepared, I heard about it like a couple days before. So, f for like two days, full two days, uh, I just had my pajamas on. I did not change, did not shower. You know, I figured that the gods would like that. Um, and then um, that night, before the actual snowpocalypse, um, I actually stood in my room by my very small freezer and chanted, David Muhaha. And um, yeah, so I was just hoping, hoping it would snow, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I got a really cute scarf, actually. <laughs> that was really warm. And that helped you a lot during it, I'm sure? Yes. Because you, you have to look cute when you're, like, dying in the middle of a snowstorm. Well, uh, first off, I went to Wegmans before it actually happened. And let me tell you, it was crazy out there. Um, you really just had to push and shove people, try to get what you wanted. I really wanted Brookside chocolates, um, so I stocked up on those. All right, and did you think that that would be a sufficient amount of food to get you through the terrible snowpocalypse? I mean, I ate them all within, like five minutes and I bought like two large bags so um probably wasn't a sufficient amount <laughs> yeah you're lucky you didn't die because as you're aware it was quite the experience I mean I almost died walking on all that ice though and still till this day I'm falling all over the place okay good well at the beginning I was getting very ready for multiple snow days uh, you know 
getting extra party supplies for our snow day. And then uh, as it went on, I realized that this was going to become less and less of, you know, the, the snow apocalypse. It was still pretty bad, though. It, it was like five inches. That's a lot. I mean, Boston got like three feet. Yeah, but I mean, if you're from like, I don't know, Florida, it's a lot of snow. That's true, but we're at the College of New Jersey, which is like 90% people from New Jersey. All right, I'll take it. How did you fare during the snow apocalypse? Because, you know, it was a really big deal. So uh, how did you fare? It was awful. Um, for some reason, they didn't cancel classes. Uh, I don't know what they were doing, um, but I... I wasn't. I didn't feel safe going out, so I didn't. Um, I didn't go to class. Uh, I did not go to any of my meetings. Um, I didn't eat. Um, yeah, I didn't. It was very bad. It was very bad. Yeah, but I had to do what I had to do. Got to stay safe, you know. It's very true. You got to do what you got to do. And how did you deal with not having class for such a long time? Because as you know, classes were gone for a very long time. Well, they weren't gone long enough, let me tell you. Um, I've had a lot of work that I've had to catch up on, and so that's kind of what I'm dealing with. Were you disheartened by the fact that we didn't have class for such a long time due to the storm? Yeah, I cried about it. I know a lot of people did. I heard the sobs ringing through the halls of Wolf. So I love learning. It's good. Good thing you're here, you know? Not a lot of people appreciate yeah. that, so yes. And last question, do you think the world will ever be the same after Snowpocalypse? Absolutely not. You heard it here? Yeah, no. No? No. Too much has happened. Yeah. The, the world's in complete and utter disarray. Yeah, yeah exactly. We'll never recover. Yeah. All right, well, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Hi guys, this is Julia Lipsy here with Lions Television. I'm here with Anchorman's favorite, David Keckner. Hi. Thank you so much for being here tonight. Thanks for having I'm me. I'm sure I can speak on everyone for everyone at TTNJ on their behalf. Thank you for coming. I'm sure. That's nice. We're all very glad to see you here. Although I do want to find the one contrarian who's you don't speak for me. <laughs> what are you gonna show him? Give him a piece of your mind? Know. Well, but no, you said I, I'm sure I speak for everybody. I'm sure there's one person here who's like, I don't like that she speaks for us. Well, I'm speaking for everyone. I like I, it. I'm glad you're here. So let me ask you, you grew up in Missouri. Uh -huh. How did you get out of Missouri and into L.A.? Desire. Desire. You didn't want to be a farmer. I was never going to be a farmer. My father was a manufacturer. He manufactured livestock trailers for turkeys. And I worked there since I was seven years old. And uh, here's the, the truth is when I was 10, I remember specifically walking around the side of my house thinking, I got to leave here. I have to live in a city. I didn't know exactly where I wanted to go. I just knew that a town of 2,000 people wasn't going to be was it going to cut it? Yeah. yeah. So I knew I had to live in the city at, at 10. And as I got older, I was a poli-sci major, and I thought, that's my way out. And then as I got into my poli-sci classes, I thought, this is not the way for me. No. And then I went in, uh, to Chicago and saw um, uh, the second city, and I saw that they taught classes. I was like, oh. Then I saved uh, my money for a year there in Columbia, Missouri, at the university where I was going, and uh, moved to Chicago, and that was that. Started taking classes at the I.O. and classes at the Second City at the same time, taking other acting classes, and uh, just, yeah, did a ton of stage work and got jobs. And here you are. So you started off really at SNL. How did that happen? Uh, I had auditioned, believe it or not, put myself on tape for Mad TV, and the casting director for that had a relationship with Lauren Michaels and said, you should check this guy out. So uh, I was invited to go out and audition along with a lot of other people from Second City and the Groundlings and Second City Toronto. And so my first audition went great, and then you wait a couple weeks, and you get invited back for your second audition, and that went well, and then you get invited back to just have a sit down. I assume, you know, it's a foregone conclusion you're gonna get the job. I guess if you, at that moment, were a real oddball, they'd go, that was it, we just wanted to sit with you for a minute. And they liked you right then and there? Even though I was an oddball. That's, that's amazing. Now, how has your relationship been with Will Farrell? You've done a lot with him. How has working with him been? Was he kind of like someone you looked up to when you started at SNL? And he's Not always at first. A funny guy? Not no? at first. But boy, quickly, like, oh, I got to look up to him, not down to him. No, <laughs> Will, I loved Will from the moment I met him. He and I were hired the same year, same day. And the same day we went out, we went to a, uh, a Yankees game. Lorne uh, sent us a car, picked us up at the hotel, went to a Yankees game. I remember that first day, Will and I were like, what? 
What just happened? You what had a Yankees just, game. Can't yeah. say I like the Yankees, but you end up at a Yankees game with well, Will Farrell. Right, right, right. Because we just both gotten hired, and we were just kind of freaked out a little bit. Uh -huh. Like, did you? Could, is this is this normal? Did that just happen? It happened, right? Anyway, no, but we uh, we were friends from the start. So that's awesome. And then you yeah. had a nice long career doing some movies with him. Yep, of course, yep. everybody loves Anchorman and Anchorman Two. Can you tell us? I mean, do you like the first one, the second one? Me better? personally. I, yeah. I, I like all of it. So it's I have a different relationship with the film than everybody else does. Okay. For everybody else, it's a different personal thing. It's like, this is my humor. Do you get my humor? Do you get me? Uh -huh. Maybe we can, you know, hang out. Uh -huh. um, then that first one became so precious for people. The second one comes along and it's like, mm, I want it. I want it really badly, but mm, I'm not sure. And then you got to remember, the first one took a long time for it to grow on people. Mm -hmm. It wasn't an immediate hit. Right. And right. at home, I think, is where people really found it on mm -hmm. cable, on direct TV or whatever, and, and uh, on DVD. So I think that relationship is very particular. And for them to be introduced to a new child, mm -hmm. Anchorman 2, mm -hmm. seems to be a, uh, a bit contentious. That's the, the gist I get. What did you, which one did you like better? I mean, I got to say the first one, the original, I mean, what is it now? 14, 15 years later, and so, I'm still going around yelling whammy everywhere I go, I you like know? That. I so, like you. I mean, I, I gotta say the first one was definitely my favorite. favorite. Now, one last thing. What advice would you give to a college student like myself who's trying to get into the business, trying to be the next Ron Burgundy or for me, Veronica Corningstone? What, do you, what, what advice would you say for me? Uh, the most important thing is know exactly where you're wanting to be, where you okay. want to wind up. That's the hardest thing for people to define. What is okay. exactly your dream? Right. You can't just say, oh, we're work in show business. Okay, well, good luck. It's There's not, so you have to know there. exactly where you're headed. Do you I know, wanna... if, you're gonna, if you're anchoring network news, is that mm -hmm. you're, you're in television? Yep. Or are you gonna anchor, you know, entertainment news? Are you gonna anchor network news, local? You're gonna be a great reporter? Whatever it is, you have to decide what you're gonna be. So once you know exactly what you want, then you back down from there going, how am I gonna get there? That sounds like and some good advice. And then just outwork everybody. Got to outwork everyone. Mm -hmm. I like that. Well, I would like to thank our favorite anchor man for joining us tonight, and it's been a pleasure again. Thank you. I'm Julia Livesey, and I'm David Keckner. Or Champ Kind, a champ. as a lot of people know that. Champ or Champs? I want to say Champ. Oh, I think. Is I, always, I like to pluralize things. Champs. I'm Champs Kinds. Can we get a whammy? <laughs> I'm whammies. Whammies? Oh, plural. Whammy! Whammies! <laughs> <laughs> See everyone later. All right, Mr. Shortino, is it? Yeah, that's, that's me, but you can call me Ben. Wonderful. My name is Frank, and I'll be your therapist today. Tell me, how long have you been in pain? Well, Doc, it's probably been close to 10 years at this point. Oh, my. This is much worse than I thought. Please, walk me through this. How did the pain begin? Well, I think it all started when I was probably around 10 years old. I was lying in bed at 3 in the afternoon when my dad burst into the room wearing a tutu and a pair of little wings. So, you see, I just lost a tooth and I put it under my pillow, and so I was expecting the tooth fairy. But when my dad couldn't even wait until nighttime to carry out his duties, it, it dawned on me that my dad's just really bad at his job. I mean, if this is how he acts to collect his own son's teeth, and how must the rest of the world feel when he goes to collect theirs? Have you seen The Tooth Fairy starring Dwayne The Rock Johnson, Doc? Um, I, I'm sorry. Are you on oxycodone? Like, a lot of oxycodone? Um, no, I'm, I'm just here for my therapy. You, you are a therapist, right? Yes, a physical therapist. You clearly have a broken ankle. Yes, but my ankle is nothing compared to my broken heart. Uh, all right, all right, let's start over. My name is Frank, and I'm here to make you feel better about walking. Now, tell me, how did you first hurt your ankle? Well, about a month ago, I was going ice skating with a couple of friends, right? It was my first time ice skating, and I figured, hey, what's the worst that could happen? So I laced up my skates, although it seems I didn't lace them up quite tight enough. And so when I was out on the ice, it, it happened. Oh, go on. I jumped in the air and I spun around and all of a sudden I could hear my uncle berating me for never going anywhere in life. You see, when I was five years old, he took me fishing and I kept falling into the water and then a shark attacked me and it was no, just... No, stop. Bad bet. Bad. <sighs> okay, okay, okay. We'll skip all the backstory and get right into the rehabilitation process. 
Now, can you stand up for me? I used to think I could stand up for what I believe in, but now I just don't know anymore. Wonderful. Now, are you able to balance on one leg? I used to think I could balance one leg for what I believe in, but now I just don't know anymore. Super. Do you have your prescription with you? Yeah, I, uh, I've got it right here. You know, I was reading this on the way over, and some of it seems a bit odd, like ultrasound. Does that mean you're going to listen to me while I make ultrasounds with my mouth about how my girlfriend and I haven't spoken in three months? No. It's a plain old ultrasound, like they perform on expecting mothers. Oh, so you're going to check Michael's pregnant. Okay, that makes way more sense. Let me see that. Okay. Massage, gait training, that makes sense. Resisted exercise, word association, emotional strength training. Wait, what the hell? Uh, I wrote that myself. I hope you don't mind. Listen to me. Sit down. Okay. I'm a physical therapist. I am not here to sort through your emotional baggage. I went to school for eight years to learn how to give somebody an ankle massage, and I am not about to waste my time talking to you about how it gets better or how everyone has problems, and you just have to bite the bullet and figure them out yourself. Do you have scars from surgery? Awesome. I have some cocoa butter. Do you have emotional scars from never meeting your mother? Again, I have cocoa butter. You're going to have to figure out the rest on your own. I have an ink blot here. <sighs> now tell me, what do you see? Because to me, it looks a lot like a degree in physical therapy. But again, that's just me. Wow, Doc, I, I think you just cured me. I mean, I don't need some therapist to make me feel better. I can feel better all by myself. No, but you do need a therapist to make your ankle feel better. You can't just convince your ankle that everything's going to be okay. No, you've already done enough, Doc. Thank you so much. I'm going to suggest you to all of my friends. <sighs> I can walk now. I'm cured. Hey, Di Dr. Weinberg. Yes, it's Frank again. I think I'm going to need to move those therapy sessions up to 5 o'clock. I need my happy place. Well, that does it for this episode of Kendallarius. Coming up next is a really emotional commercial for a beer that will make you cry into your buffalo wings and give your bro sitting next to you a really heartfelt high five. If you're interested in joining LTV, like us on Facebook or download our new app. Disclaimer, this app is only compatible with iOS 3 or lower. I'm Natalie Lispiza. Have a sick day.